The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at dallasgenealogy.org. This is Roots Magic Special Interest Group for the Dallas Genealogical Society in October 2021. We're going to start off by talking about the new release of Roots Magic 8 that has been long anticipated, about two years now. Um, it is very, very different from Roots Magic 7. It's a whole new database. If you decide you don't like it, you can go back to 7. You have to import your 7 database into 8, so your, the version 7 won't ever be impacted by going to 8. There is a large learning curve with this because it's a whole new format, a whole new look. But for those of us that came from Family Tree Maker, which a lot of us did, there's a lot of things in here that are very similar to Family Tree Maker. So just take that into consideration. The original handouts that I sent out was on setup and how to download it and import your file into it and do some generalized settings. I sent up two others, one with shortcuts and one with how to do data entry. There are a bunch of others in the pike that I am planning that as I get them done, I'll email them out. There will be one on sources. There will be one on media. There will be one on miscellaneous items. There will be one on special tools. So you can see there's quite a few that are in the pikes. Media will probably be the next one because that seems to be where a lot of people are having issues and problems and they want to um, be able to um, figure out how to make it work the best for them. Anyway, I have already put a tree in here, but in order to um, help people um, import or show you how to import, I'm going to go on and import another one. This is the home screen when you open it up. You're going to see a window that comes up that looks like this. It tells you about the file that you have entered in there. And I don't know why it says shells from Ancestry because it's not from Ancestry and I didn't name it that. And then this is the news. You know how used to when you open Roots Magic 7, there would be this splash screen that came up that would give you the news. Well, now it's on this for front format and you can keep it up or you can, um, click on them and check them and they, they will go away. And I apologize for the bells. I have no control over my ring doorbell. Um, there's also help and support webinars online, Roots Magic TV. There's an online community and technical support. I will tell you though, there's not a whole lot on Roots Magic 8 out there yet. Technical support is overwhelmed. Um, the little bit I've looked at on the online community cannot really help me very much unless you go and get on um, Facebook has a Roots Magic users page. And I have uploaded these handouts to that page because there were so many people that were complaining about the workflow. It's a new workflow, people. You're going to have to just adjust. There's nothing else you can do about it. Um, it's similar. They're all, all programs are similar. They all have their idiosyncrasies. So you have to just be aware of that. All right. To import, you're going to go to file, which is the next icon off of home. And you have several different options. Create a new file, which basically gives you a blank worksheet to go through. 
open a Roots Magic file 8 file that you've already imported, restore from backup, and let's face it, we all have to do that every once in a while. This is where you also do backups, import, export tools, and then close file. Import that data is where you want to go. And it will give you this window. Import from Roots Magic 1 through 7, JEDCOM, or another program. Or download from an online tree. I will briefly say if you download from an online tree, be prepared to have a lot of cleanup. Your media from Ancestry will come down named with names that you cannot associate with the media. You will have to open each and every one of them and look at them to know what they are. If you look in your file folder, a lot of them are with just a number that's anywhere from eight to 20 characters long. I've done that on, on another tree and it's a nightmare to clean up. I don't recommend it. Import lists are uh, where you can import facts and things from another Roots Magic file, like your sources and um, things like that. And at one time I had a, an empty file that just had sources and facts in it to do imports with. I'll see if I can find that and get it into eight and then get it posted up somewhere. But you're gonna click on import from Roots Magic 7 or whatever else. And for some reason, all of mine is grayed out. Why I don't know. So you, could, so you could if you wanted import from Family Tree Maker. As long as it's Family Tree Maker up through version 14 with no updates. What's no the problem? Because 14 had several updates and that is not the code that Roots Magic was given. So you had, I would backwards save it to 12. Because Teresa? You, yeah. I imported mine from TMG. TMG, you can straight. Yeah, it, work, it works good. Yeah. Uh, so but for Family Tree Maker, because I have proprietary code and still do. You, can, you have to save it from 2019 backwards to 20 to um, what I say 12 wow. version in order for it to uh, import because it won't do if you just do 14. It will definitely not do 19. Um, huh. Oh, and they've updated. They when we first loaded this a few days ago, Roots Magic to Go was not there. It's there now. And I don't know why my import is only letting me do a JEDCOM. I put this on, I only uploaded this on this computer not too long ago, um, or last night actually. And the file that I have open is the one that I did over there anyway. So you would. So you would not, I'm sorry, you would not do it from a JEDCOM off of Family Tree Maker 19, 2019. You would do this backwards thing, right? I would, I would, I would do a backup file to 2012. And I think you can import from a, a um, backup file. Just remember when you do a backup and do it, make sure you save all your media with it. You have to do an entire backup, including media, right. so that when you recreate it, your media is going to have a link and know where to go. Okay. Um, so that is. Um, Can you say that one more time, Teresa, what you just said about the media? When you do a backup or when you do an import or anything, you want to a backup. You want to make sure you include your media so that when you restore it, or in this case, you're going to import it. All the little media links, you know, like for your pictures are going to remain intact. Let me open this and let me show you if I can figure out how to do it. Um, all the, uh, well, crummy. 
this file name tells you where it is being held. Um, and that is in the wrong place. I don't know how this got in there. Um, so that, you know, I love it. One Even our file, guru. You know how you, well, let me see if I can find a file. Well, this is one that will work. Let's see if, it, if I have it. I'll drag it over to my shared window if, once it opens. Well, this will be an, no, it's not a good example. This is why I wanted to do a media um, handout because it gets real complicated if you don't. Family Tree Maker, it all lumped it in one big folder because everything wanted to be copied into it. With Roots Magic, you can keep them in the original folder that um, you had it in when you linked it. And if you break the link, you can relink it. Um, there we go. All right. This is kind, this is not a complete one because I'm this is one I'm in the process of working. Um, I have all these different file folders named with different types of records. And in some of them, I have multiple information like census records. I have a fault another folder inside of this for each census year. I have one for mortality schedules, non-population slave state because I do have some state that I use census records and the sub and census substitutes. In the vital record one, I have birth, marriage, death. Uh, I haven't gone through as much and done um, like in church records as much as baptismal and, and uh, death and marriage, but they probably should be there as well. And the reason there's stuff that's not in a folder is I haven't linked this stuff yet. I've put them in the folder so I can link them and then I'm going to move them and then I'll do a relink. But if you do it back up with everything in it, including the media, it will include the string that up, up like a, if this is the one that's entered that it's linked to, oops, I didn't mean to open it. It will give you the string where it's linked. So this entire string, mine are long because of how I've got my file system set up, but it makes it easier for you to keep your media intact when you move it. If you just import it directly from Family Tree from uh, Roots Magic 7N, it will um, uh, automatically do that for you. You don't have to redo it. Um, okay. Marty, Marty had a um, question in chat. I think it's been answered. Marty, did you get your answer? I just want to make sure that if uh, we can import Family Tree 11 or earlier. I believe Is Family Tree, answer? I think Family Tree Maker anywhere from 14 back um, is what they said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's version 2014 or earlier. And one of the reasons that you, but it can't be an updated 2014. It has to be a native 2014 and not very many people would have a native um, 2014 anymore because there were updates to it. After McKeeve bought it or got it, they did some updates and those updates are not included. So um, it won't do, it, it will croak. I mean, it won't even let you do it. Um, anyway, I went through and, and did a lot of, on the intro, talking about the different places and some brief information. The big thing is, is to get your file settings the way you want them 
so that by the time you get over here to do, um, well, people were having trouble and now I see why they're having trouble. Here we go. All right. Um, for some reason, this is going really slow and I don't know why, except everything I have is up on, in the cloud. Um, Oh, maybe that's why it's in the cloud. So the reason there's a learning curve is because everything looks different. So familiarize yourself with the new screens and where they will do from the handout. Make sure you get your configurations set up um, and do your web hint stuff. Um, that means um, you want to get your username and password in some of these different websites. Um, and then for those of you that are keyboard people, the shortcuts are rather minimal in this version. As of right now, there's not just a whole lot of them. A lot of people are complaining about it because let's face it, every time you take your hands off the keyboard to use your mouse, you waste time. And I went through, there are some that are in the command pa uh, palette, which is this little art palette up here that gives you some of the commands and different things that, that can be done. I found a whole lot more than what is on this list. So you just kind of have to pay attention um, when you're working on stuff. Um, I will try at some point that shortcut one is going to be redone, but I have to figure out how to do it because some of them are specific to a specific window. But one of the things that's not on the list that I found very quickly is if you do the control shift and E, it opens the edit person box. And that's important because this is where you put your facts. This is where you do your sourcing, everything. And I found out how to add a, um, a new fact with an alt A, your fact list come up instead of having to click on the plus to add a fact. And this one works the same way, only actually a little bit better than the facts did in 2017, because you can start typing your, um, what you want in here and it's gonna really fine tune the word for you. And then all you have to do is select it and click okay. I think this is the one you have to click okay on. Yeah. If you can figure out how to cursor down and get to close, let me know. Um, you can use your, your tab key well, it's not working. All right, let's get up here. Yeah, you can use your tab key to move down through these different fields. Um, groups is something that are some of the special, under, gonna be under special tools and also web tags. But you can just cursor down this list. And this one, I know why it's taking so long to load. There's this little wind box up here that says show relative events. I think I talked about this in something. This shows the birth of the siblings, the, your spouse, spouses, in this case, she married two times. If you uncheck that box, come on, uncheck. Here we go it gives you only the people. So it kind of helps you um, load faster. I don't think they realized that when they added all that additional stuff that it was going to make it cumbersome, if, especially if you don't have um, a very fast CPU or hard drive. Um, and like in my case, I'm doing it from the internet, so it's harder because all of my stuff is in the cloud. 
but here are, yeah, you, you can also use your up and down arrow keys to move up and down, not just the tab or the shift tab to move up and down. I want to get over here. The only thing is you do, it won't let you come over here. It, I haven't found a way to get over here to where you can do your editing. But you can, once you get over here, you can cursor down. And at first I thought things were missing, but I didn't realize there was a slide bar over there. So nothing's missing. Um, and you can, well, it's not tabbing. Same path. Uh, Question? Yeah. Uh, you were talking about shortcuts before you get too far off of that. You're saying that Roots Magic does not have the shortcuts in the file menu. Like if you go to File, Open, and the shortcut is over next to it on the right side of that box. No. Roots Magic doesn't have those clues in there? They're not there. Yeah. They didn't put them in. Well, that's never it's clear. I mean, okay. there are some there are some places that have um, in the button if there is an, a letter that's underscored or has, is underlined if you do an alt and that letter it will do what that function says but there aren't very many of those I have not found them all I keep finding them and that's what I was saying that's why it will be updated the more I work with this I will update the handout um, but one of the I'm things, not, huh? Well, I'm, th I'm thinking of so many other Windows menus, but the family tree, I just double checked. Uh, if you go to the, the manual itself, you know, like alternate F, and you see all the choices, the shortcuts are right there, not just the underlying letter, but the, they're spelled out, control this or something like that. No, but, but there are are you, that. Where, are you talking about the command thing? Yeah, the file, the file bar. Commands, edit. There are no file bars here. In that program at all? No. Oh, okay. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. They totally rewrote this. Your file menu bar across the top is non-existent. A lot of that stuff has been moved to the left-hand side, and it's an icon. There's no drop-down menus there. It takes you to a workspace like Family Tree Maker did, only there's no individual edit stuff there. Um, if you get into your edit citations. Citations work similarly as they have always worked. You have a master source and then you have a citation. The difference is in this version, you know how in, the, in seven you always had to give them a new, um, you just pasted the existing source. In this one, it will allow you to use the same one over and over and over again. So you don't end up with humongous lists of sources. But basically, this is a, the new source um, workspace where I have my master sources. This is not a cleaned up database. Actually, that's why this is something screwy on this. Um, anyway, it will tell you how many sources are there. And if they're duplicates, you can merge them together. It will tell you if you've got media attached. If you click on this, here's the media. If you click it again, well, this is one. Oh, let me go back. This is one that came down from An Ancestry. Do you know what that media is? Just by looking at the at the image? No. You know, if I had downloaded this manually and linked it, it would be named whatever the name of the person is and the place and the, and the year of the census. So that's why I don't recommend that. This did come from Ancestry. And somebody was complaining that they couldn't get in here and make this bigger. I don't exactly understand what they were complaining about because um, I thought it worked similarly to the way it did in um version seven, except let me try something. No, nope, it won't move. Yes, it will. 
I'm moving this to another um, monitor and I'm gonna see if this works. Now it's frozen. Uh, yeah, the um, your edit people per boxes can be moved off and they don't freeze your um, workspace anymore. You know, used to, if you had an edit person box up, you couldn't do anything else. You couldn't look under it. Well, now you can. You can just, and you can open multiple edit people boxes and put them on a separate monitor. Um, I don't know how many people work with multiple monitors. Um, I would recommend it if you don't, uh, if you have room to do that, because it makes it easier to do transcriptions, all sorts of things if you have two monitors. Multiple monitors is the only way to go. Oh, I know. <laughs> I agree with that. After you use it once, you won't go back. No, I know you won't. You won't. You won't. Anyway, um, so the data entry one, I really went through a process for adding new people and some of the shortcuts that you can have and how to do data entry. So um, anyway, I am now gonna meet you, Joe. Um, if there are, if anybody needs help getting it imported, I mean, I'm sure most of you can get it downloaded. Don't forget to download the Place Authority, which is a separate little thing. I don't exactly understand why they did that. They did it in the old one too. Um, but this allows you to do some cleanup and do some stuff. Let me go back to um, file and see if I can open. Well, this is the one that it says I had it done. Okay, Teresa, in chat, there's a question about explaining the place authority and how to download it. When you go to download regular Roots Magic 8, right below it, there is a thing to download the place authority. If you're on a PC, that does not apply to Mac people. The Mac people have a separate thing to download. Basically, they've written two separate programs, one for Macs and one for Windows. What does place authority mean? I think it's when, let me go to my, wait a minute. I think it's place. I think that, well, everything has taken a really long time to do. Oh, crud. So, Teresa, if you're not using Roots Magic yet, even though I bought the old one, you know, and never went to this, Catherine, it, it'd be smart if I think I'm going to go there someday to go ahead and, and do the download now because you get like, what, a $15 discount or something? Yeah, I would go on and get it downloaded. Yeah. Okay. I would probably also go on and get it installed and get it registered so they have your key somewhere. A lot of people were really, because it took them so long to get this released, hmm. a lot of people did not have their keys anymore. Oh, okay. I don't Roots know. Magic 8, a lot of people bought it early. Um, and hmm. anyway, this is the place authority, and I don't, or this is my places, and I don't know why um, it's, showing up this way. Well, it looks like places in family tree. It, well, this came from a family tree maker or it came off directly off of Ancestry. And Teresa? Yeah. When I downloaded, it gave me two files when I downloaded. It gave me the Roots Magic file and then it had a place file. Yeah, that's for PC people. If you're on a Mac, you yeah. only had. Yeah, I, I had. I downloaded both of them, loaded yeah, them all and, out on mine. And, and so, you, I don't know what the Place Authority does. I just know that they they said you ha you need both. 
that may have something to do with your mapping. Uh, I know that they decided to not use Bing. They wrote their own. Um, they were having too much, or I don't know how to say this. I guess Bing and Google Maps wanted were proprietary stuff and they kept changing the code and it was making it impossible to keep up with. I mean, it, you know, everybody has the right to change their code, but anyway, that's the way it works. Um, and of course, then here's your media. If you just go down this list, you can learn a lot. And there's a publishing thing, which I'm not going to even talk about publishing for a long time because just getting through this part of it's going to be difficult for a lot of people. Um, I'm trying to decide for one thing, I'm not going to be using this one on this. I'm going to figure out a better way of doing it so it will move um, because I don't know why this home button keeps like it's pulsing. It wants you to go home. Well, it says there's an update. And I don't want to take the time to do an update um, in this lecture. So um, that may be why I'm kind of locked up out of stuff. Um, I don't know. Um, why it's doing that. Good grief. Everything is moving slow. Um, Grace, every well, while it's moving slow, there's another question in chat. If they're on a Mac, what do they do for Alt plus whatever? Is there a Mac alternative? I understand there is, but I do not know what they are. I don't know the shortcuts in a Mac. Um, I don't know if, um, I know of anybody that I can ask that question. Oh, I do. I'll ask her and see if she can give me a list of different Mac shortcuts. Hey, Teresa, I, I not just thought- Not for this software, I mean for the OS, what? I just thought of something. Didn't we pay for a, a manual that never got delivered and only got made as a option on the site or something? Was that on this or was that Family Tree? That was Family Tree Maker. Okay. And the manual is available through help on Family Tree Maker. Yeah, but they never gave you a, 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 a printed copy that you paid for, right? No. Teresa, this is Barbara Ware. Um, yeah. The uh, key for Alt on the Mac is Option. Oh, the op oh. Well, that's what it says online anyway, that, that um, Alt on the Windows machine, you use Option on the Mac. Now, someone said they didn't, that didn't work. But uh, you may want to try. If y'all will experiment with it and let me know, then I will create a work, a um, short so, key for the Mac people. OK, so my other question is, because I've been waiting so long for this one to come out. I mean, I bought seven, but I didn't use it because I didn't like it. Uh, are you going to do? A couple of classes for those of us that are beginner beginners. Yes. I mean, like I saw some screens and I'm, I was looking at like an individual screen that you've had up there and I don't know how to get that on mine. So I'd like to know beginner, you know, I've I downloaded it. Now what do I do? What do I, in terms of how it works? Are, do you want somebody to do like, from the beginning, or are you going to try to import something into it? So you, I've already imported from into seven some stuff, and then I then imported those into eight. So I'm to the place that I've got stuff in eight, but I don't know what to do now. Okay, well, the handout that is called Data Entry Routine, uh huh, 
will help with a lot of that. Okay. I have that. I've printed it. Yeah. Um, basically. Where, where is that handout? How do you get the handout? I emailed them out to people. Well, I emailed it to the group. And um, so if you're not in on the Roots Magic email group, um, you need to send me an email so I can get you added. I just yeah. put it in my chat. Do you want me to, um, I mean, put it, my email address in chat. Do you want me to send it somewhere? No, no, I can write it down. Teresa. Yeah. Catherine again. Hey, I just thought of something. If you have Roots Magic 7, can I download my current 2019 family tree into 7? No, 2019 will not go into any. Ah, so I, did, I was thinking if I could do that and then go up. Okay, I'm trying to figure out a sneaky way. Okay, thanks. No, that was the issue. That was the issue. Um, oh, the option key doesn't work in, the, in Max. So let me, um, like I said, I will, add, I will, Barbara, I know you know Max pretty well, so maybe you can play with it and let me know if you find something that works. And if you so, could. So I have to know, where is it that she's trying to use alt? Uh, well, a lot of the windows, um, let me see if I can find one. Um, so I know where to tell you to go look and see if it's on a Mac. Um, I mean, what were you doing to, to that you had well, to y'all keep? In a window somewhere. Um, let me. Okay. This is the person page for it. Everybody will be, get familiar with this one. This is the way the new person page looks. Okay. From here, you can do a lot of things. There's a little edit button right here. Uh -huh. On a PC, you can do a, a shift control E to open the edit box. Okay. I can do an alt O that opens the option box for this window. To show place details, to show shared events, show parent events, sibling events, child events, spouse events, or show all. Oh, now tell, I'm sorry, let me write that, that down. Repeat what it was to get the person page. Shift. Shift. Uh, control E. Shift, a, shift a, control E. Yeah. And that's in the um, handout for um, shortcuts. Okay. And then the next one is you do alt O to get that next page up from, from the person page. Yeah. Okay. And I found out that if you do a, um, let's see, alt F4 should close that window. That's not anywhere. Um, I, Mitch told me how to do that. So thank you for, to him for helping me with some of the routine controls that he knew about that do sometimes work. Um, the shift control E, if you want to, like I said, the alt A will add a fact. Um, So there's a lot of different things in different places. Oh, that one doesn't have it. If you, that alt O, well, some I'm just of trying to find the shortcut key rather than clicking on those three dots. Because if you click on those three dots at the top, it brings up options or oh, I options know, is in that list. For those people that are keyboard people like me, anytime you take your hands off the keyboard, it takes time. I would prefer not to click that. I have to use my mouse to click on anything. In version seven, I could add a source and never touch 
my mouse. You can't do that in this version. A lot of people are complaining about that. But that is um, the reality. They, I hope they eventually get some shortcuts. What I was gonna say, if, if a window is open and there is a word in there and there is an underline under the letter, that is where um, the alt whatever um, can be done. I played with a lot of different alts and control shift and or shift control and control stuff to try to move around. Um, the biggest obstacle in this now is instead of being able to do something, you have to click on the source icon or the empty box like right here to get over to sources. So it's, it's kind of cumbersome. When you get to sources, you can type in the beginning of your source and it will take you there. So there are some nice things, but there are also, it's, it's just gonna take time to get used to. And that's what a lot of people um, I can't tell you how many people were so upset with Ancestry when they went from 2016 to 2008. When they changed the whole format, there was a big brouhaha. Well, that's what's going on now with Roots Magic. There's a big brouhaha because it's changed. It looks different. It feels different. Um, and there are some people that are having problems with the software crashing. Although I don't exactly understand that because I haven't had that problem. <laughs> um, that, that is a software's problem. I know I've had the problem because I did something stupid and crashed it, um, which is possible to do. Um, so be aware of that. So Barbara, if you... Look at that handout that's got um, the shortcuts on it. Uh huh. And go through it and tell me what they should be for Max. I will do a handout for Max. I, I tried all of the different, uh, you know, control option commands with an O and nothing happened. And of course, I have a Mac that doesn't have a mouse, I have a trackpad. So, and I don't have function keys, you know, so if it asks me to hit a function key, I'm not sure what, what to well, do. Can I ask you, when you hit your, wait a minute, where'd it go? When you hit this little command pilot up, pilot up here. Uh-huh. Those little dots? Are not the, little, the dots, the little icon next to it that looks like a painter's palette, you know, that they hold with the paint dabs on it. Okay. Does this window come, uh, does a window come open? It uh, does for me. I'm yes, on I, Mac. I get, I get a command palette that comes up, yes. Does it have options over here that tell you things? Yes. Uh-huh. It has. Okay, we've got like uh add a child is is uh I don't know what that little upper carrot is. So I guess that's like it's something. Maybe it's a shift. You think that's a is shift it, and an yeah, up? Yeah, I don't have that little uh carrot thing on my keyboard. I can't see it. Well, you have it above your six, but if you're gonna get it, you have to hit down a you have to do a oh, shift, yeah. and a shift and a carrot. So I think you think that uh, that thing is a is a is a shift C shift. Let me try it at a child. Because what's the next one? Is that one a shift or the arrow key? I don't think it's an arrow key. Yet. Shift. Oh, you know what? It's the control. That's control. Oh, it's control, control six C. Yeah, I think it's control shift C is what the up arrow. The oh, control shift. Okay. Yeah. So let me try that. Control shift C. No. Yes. Control shift C gave me a new child. So backwards from. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Barbara, or one of you guys, if you will send me. 
a screenshot of those so I can, I'll make a new handout for the Max and because it's different from the PC. I mean, it, you can see how many things there are that they don't have very many on here. And I don't even talk about the alts. I found those by playing around. Um, so you might be able to figure out some stuff too, just by looking for the, that underscored uh, letter in some of the fields. It's not in all of them. I think they stuck it in in some places. So just be aware of that. This will make this will be several screenshots because it's a long list. That's fine. Because that's what I had to do when I was making this list. So, um, but I want to help you guys as much as the Mac. I mean the um, PC people, and I don't have a Mac and I don't use it. So, if anybody has any um, help for some of those things, then um, we will try to get that fixed for you guys. Yeah, uh, they, they don't have um, you know they don't have uh, controls for everything on there. <laughs> like a things listed and then there's nothing after oh, it. I know, because it's that way for the PC too. Oh, okay. I mean, it's a long list, but they don't have shortcuts for them. I don't know why they did that. I, it made it confusing in my opinion. Well, maybe they'll... Maybe they plan on adding them. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe they're going to add them. Also from this people button, I have mindset default to open on this page. You can have it default to any of the options up here. This, you know, in Reads Magic 7, they had options where you could open in different views. They added a new one, couples. But I always like to see the family group and I like to see, um, I want it to open in the person I was in the last. Uh, and those are all in the settings information that I sent out on getting your criteria and your stuff set up. Um, I am thinking, I will be sending out handouts, like I said, a lot of them before we meet again in December. But in December, I think I will probably start from scratch with a new tree and we will go from there. That way people can learn how, you know, and I'll know more about how to do things and that handouts may be updated and changed. Like I said, they've already gotten an update out. So um, I know that they're, wor they're still working on this. So, so right now, in order to get the markdown price, uh -huh. um, I need to go, even though I've got Roots Magic on this computer, I just, you know, and, and I put a database on back in 2016, 15, whenever it was, way in the beginning. So it's got a database on it. It's just not my current one. You know, I never kept it up. Would I go ahead and just go ahead and let that convert? It doesn't convert. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. You didn't, you have to import because it's a whole new database structure. So then I shouldn't bother doing it. Just download the thing, buy it, download it, and then don't do anything until I'm ready to use it. Correct. Thank you. Sorry uh, to be the dead horse. <laughs> that's okay. A lot of people don't understand that. Anyway, so I'm hoping this helps people because I, I know it is very confusing and it's hard to learn new software. It always is. And to make matters worse, Family Search changed their interface a few weeks ago. If you haven't noticed, you've done a search on Ancestry, the results list. When you click, an M, click on a result that you want to go look at, it looks totally different. Their search venue just recently changed too. And Ancestry's changed Tuesday. To their search stuff changed. So 
we're not dealing with just having to learn new roots magic. We're going to have to learn new search techniques on all of them because they look different and the spaces are different. And I think when I do the sources handout for this, I will probably try to do some information on how to use those two websites. Because almost everybody has ancestry, they pay for it, and, and Family Search, of course, is free. I don't see the point in doing Find My Past or My Heritage because everybody doesn't have those two. And I don't recommend those two for a lot of people. Um, Find My Past, if you have British Isles people, is wonderful because they have Irish and English and Scottish and Welsh, Welsh records. Um, as well as some U.S. records because they've teamed with the New York Genealogical and Historical Society for some of their records. So they do have some um, U.S. stuff, but it's big British Isles because that's where they got started. Um, but I've also found information from other countries there. My heritage, if you have Swedish or French or um, Norway, those, they have some really good indexes and media uh, images there too for on my heritage. But there again, those are specific places. And if you don't have them, I don't know the point in spending the amount of money those subscriptions cost. Um, I have a client that has Swedish, so I use it all the time. And a lot of times I find stuff on my heritage and then I pop over to ancestry.com and use their non-indexed Swedish records to look for more information. So you learn how to use the skill, the tools that you have. Um, are there any other questions? Then we'll wind this up because it's there's, almost there's a a new chat. Um, you might want to look at. Okay. Message. Chat message. Teresa, this is Herb Reed. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, back on uh, shortcuts, I went through your list. I have a Mac. And F1 doesn't work, F2 doesn't work, F5 doesn't work, and there's no alt key, so there are uh, five alt shortcuts that, I, that aren't on there. Well, that's why I was asking Barbara if she would send me a list, and then I'm going to get with um, probably Barbara, and I think Happy McQuirk might be able to help with some of it too, even though she, because she's been a she teaches reunion. Well, I think Teresa Hall can help you too. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm on a Mac as well, so I'm going to look into it. Um, and I you, can you open your, can you open your little shortcut, uh, that shortcut palette real quick and scroll down to the hide command? Because I want to see what it looks like on a PC. I don't have a command that's hide. On a Mac, we okay. there's hide other, <coughs> excuse me, hide others. And that's the option key, the command key, and capital H. Right. So I think the short menu that we're seeing on the Mac is Mac specific because oh, on yeah. a Mac, the command command he has that goofy little symbol, um, and that's what we see in the shortcut list, but PCs don't have that symbol. They have a command key, but they don't have that symbol. So what we're seeing on the Mac is specific to the Mac, I believe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is two separate pieces of software. There's a lot of things that will work the same, but the shortcuts and stuff will not because you have a different keyboard structure. Well, and that's pretty typical. I mean, you know, all kinds of software, yeah. different key commands, you know. I mean, I can do a screenshot real easily and everybody that I know that uses a Windows has to go to someplace else to do it. I mean, I can do key, the key codes with my fingers to get uh, screenshots. And I don't think Windows people can do that. Well, I can on my other one. I haven't figured out which keys on my Surface 
It is um, some of my, cause all of the things, um, some of these things I have to do screenshots for in order to put them in the handouts. Mm -hmm. On the surface, I can't figure out what key I'm supposed to punch. It's a, it's like a, a control print screen or something, but it does. For some reason, I wasn't getting it to work mm. the other day on my surface. It was working on my PC that I or my laptop that I was doing the handouts on. I originally loaded eight on a separate um, on, on a different machine because I didn't want to get myself confused because I'm still doing client work. And I haven't converted the client stuff yet until I figured everything out. <laughs> so, you know, I have to take that into consideration. So, okay, I'm going to stop share and, and say that if anybody needs me to um, um, send them an email, uh, let me know and I will add you to the email list. And send out the family tree maker information here when we get off. Mary Lou has posted uh, a link to a new video from Roots Magic that explains about working with files. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. I think that somebody asked about if I'm taping this, I think that all the um, chat session gets saved too. So we'll see what it says. All right, so I'm going to stop this share. There we go. Okay. And like I said, if anybody has any ideas. So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your boss. Oh, that you have to finish good grief. Something, that email, that link um, went to an ad. Um, now, Roots Magic has put, been very busy trying to do stuff. And they're, they're kind of short staffed, I think. Um, so, if anybody has any questions or needs help, email me at my personal email, not the group email, because I don't go out there very often and read it. Okay. If there isn't anything else, we'll call, Thank it, you. We'll call it a day. Thank you, Teresa. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you for attending. This has been a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. Your fees have been supporting these and other society activities. If you're not yet a member, please consider joining now. Go to dallasgenealogy.org and click on the membership tab.